Will Tucker, who is the youth minister at the Dalrada Church of Christ, they were recently featured in the news for helping uh, some of the uh, some people that were in need up in New York City with personal protective gear, which of course is absolutely crucial for healthcare workers and people on the front lines in this crisis. And so we go now to Will Tucker. How you doing, Will? Hey, Caleb. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. It's good to hear from you. And, and for those of you who don't know, just full disclosure, uh, Will's actually a good personal friend of mine. We go to the same congregation and, and worship together there. So, Will, I, I did want to go ahead and, and get into and give everybody the backstory in case they haven't read some of the, the coverage that's gone on it. Exactly what all happened here and, and how did it come about? Sure. Um, Brandon Harmon's a good friend of mine. We grew up together, um, went to school together, middle school to high school. Mm-hmm. We've kind of stayed in touch ever since um, we both kind of went our separate ways after high school. Uh, Brandon is a critical care nurse at um, Princeton in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. And when the governor, Kumo of New York, uh, asked for nurses to basically volunteer and come and help with the COVID crisis in New York, right. uh, Brandon and his wife talked it over and they decided that it would be good for him to go. Uh, and so he took the journey there towards the end of March mm-hmm. and arrived towards the end of March in actually at Harlem hospital in New York. And he has been working there since the end of March up, up until now. Right. And Brandon, Brandon's a really interesting guy. Um, Brandon's always been a very outgoing individual, um, a really good leader as well. Mm. As a matter of fact, as he's working at Harlem hospital, he is in charge of 147 nurses uh, on his staff. He does the staffing for the nurses huh. and, and nurses will come in. He'll have new nurses that come in every week. It seems like they switch in and out. Um, and he is going to be there until the month of June. Just found that out uh, yesterday when I was talking with him. Okay. And so to say all that, uh, how we got involved was I, I saw on Facebook where he was headed up to New York, gave him a call and asked how things were going. Uh, mm-hmm. We still have a great relationship where we can talk. Uh, anytime we want to pick up the phone, we'll just pick up the conversation, it seems like. And about three weeks ago, when I called him for the first time, he told me that I just asked him, how are things going? And he says that the news is correct. What's coming out of New York. It's, it's yeah. a very sad situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says, I said, well, how are you doing personally? Cause more than anything, I want to check on him personally. Cause that would take a toll on him. He has been working three week three weeks straight and works 12 hour shifts at night. So basically 21 days on and he'll get a few days off. Uh, after that so it's basically work and sleep and three weeks ago when i first talked to him brandon was telling me that uh I, about their supplies i'd heard rumors and seen the news reports about supplies running low and he said all that was right. true um, at harlem hospital they were doing the best they could uh, there were so many patients at one time he says they literally had to spray down their mask at night and reuse them the next day mm-hmm. the gloves they had to wash the gloves and reuse them after every patient they treated, they'd have to go and just wash their gloves and soap. Uh, and they were lacking on face shields, mask and gloves and gowns. And so what I did was Delray church of Christ. Um, there's a man there named John Cackleman. He's one of our in-house missionaries and John's a right. great individual. Me and you both went on mission trip with him to Ukraine before right. we did that last year. Yeah. Yeah. Great trip. And so John is, is very involved in benevolent aid and, um, Reached out to John and asked him, do we have any PPE equipment? I've got a friend, a good friend of mine that could really use it, him and his nursing mm-hmm. staff. Right. And John said, we've got stuff ready to go on pallets now. And so me and him boxed up about three weeks ago, boxed up about seven big boxes of face shields. We mm-hmm. had gloves and we had uh, gowns and sent them to Brandon and his staff. And I will share a picture with you real quick of Brandon and his yeah, staff. Go ahead. You can see. This is Brandon. He is on the bottom row. Uh, he is in the gray sweatshirt, and he is the redheaded guy. That's oh. one, my good friend, Brandon. And so this is the nursing staff. He helps coordinate each week and gets them running as smooth as possible there at the hospital. When he reached out to me, he said, we just were running low on supplies. Mm-hmm. And so we boxed up seven big boxes of PPE products, and we shipped them to him, and they arrived about a week after we talked. And he has been distributing those products, uh, those supplies with his staffing unit um, throughout the week. Mm -hmm. He said, really on the weekends where we needed it the most. And uh, I actually have, 
I've got a couple more pictures. I think you can see these better. We'll try it one more time here. So these are actual staff members, and you can see if you can see in the picture, they mm. all are from the all over the United States. Each person on his staff, 147 nurses, right. have answered the call to volunteer, and this is them being seen with the products we were able to give them. And so they wanted to reach out and say thank you and wrote a nice letter that we'll share with the congregation a little bit later once we're all back together. But Brandon is working hard. He just signed up to stay throughout the month of June to work mm -hmm. at Harlem Hospital. And he has, he said the experience has been very eye-opening, but at the same time, he, he sees that there is a great need and that he right. was glad to answer the call to help. Well, I, I think that, just and, and you know this because a lot of people at, at home may not realize this, but I, I know this because I've known you for a long time. Uh, I've been Will's friend for a while and I know him and I know his family and his wife is actually in healthcare as well. And I think just to and you can speak to this, of course, sure. to get into that profession in the first place, you just kind of have to have a heart for people. And I, I think based on what you're telling me with the, the fact that he was willing to go up there and, and put himself in harm's way, even though that wasn't where he normally works and, and the kind of work that he and the other nurses and the staff have put in, I think it really does just kind of show that that's just the kind of people most nurses are. Yes. They, I tell you, they have a heart of gold. Um, mm. I think about my wife as well. She loves what she does, you know, being able to take care of, she takes care of the children in the nursery and the babies. She right. loves it. And I, when I spoke to Brandon, I said, you know, what made you want to go? He said, you know, there are some student loans and debts I want to pay off. But he said, above all, these people need our help. Mm -hmm. He says, I just felt like I could do this and I could help out. And he said, I had the experience to help lead a crew like this of nurses. And so I volunteered. Um, and that's just Brandon. That's how he's always been. Mm -hmm. He's ready to jump in and help in at moment's notice. He does weigh in the factors of what could happen. But I'll tell sure. you this stat. And when I talked to him on Monday, he said out of the 147 nurses he, he has, mm -hmm. none have tested positive for the virus. That's I thought incredible. that was just incredible. Yeah. I thought that was also a testament to the power of prayer. He's a, he prays daily, he prays with his nurses. It's just incredible to think that they are staying as healthy as they can while they're there. Well, and, and hopefully part of that is the the protective equipment that's been donated by the Dowrated Church of Christ and, and hopefully other yep. places as well. So, uh, you know, that's that's a big part of it. And uh, if there's anything that we can do here, we've got to protect the people that are out there on the front lines like Brandon and, and like your wife and, and like our other healthcare professionals, because the whole point of doing the shutdowns and flattening the curve and everything, the whole point of that was to make sure that we didn't get overwhelmed and that our ha hospital staff didn't all get sick at the same time to where they wouldn't be able to take care of others. So, um, you know, th that's just such an instrumental part to this whole equation. That's true, Caleb. Um, he did tell me when I talked to him on Monday, mm -hmm. he said the, with the lockdown taking place in New York, things right. have really gotten better. He said the number of patients <laughs> have gone down. He said the number of deaths have gone down. He mm -hmm. said it, it's been really good to see the virus has seemed to slow there and uh, people are not as panicked as they were once before. Well, that is fantastic news because I know in New York it was it was nowhere near the levels that we've seen in like Italy and Spain and China, but it still was really bad for a couple of weeks and, and hopefully yes. uh, since we we're seeing it sort of calm down and, and people – uh, have, have been able to somewhat start returning to, uh, you know, s some semblance of normalcy, I guess is the, the best way that we can say it and probably the best that they can hope for right now. So yeah. uh, just to give us an idea, exactly how much of this stuff was donated? Because I haven't seen any exact figures. I mean, was sure. it just a couple pallets or what? Uh, we had one whole pallet, and within the boxes you had mm. uh, packs of, Packs of glove, I think we packed in, I would say, several thousand uh, pairs of gloves. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, we had a lot of drapes they could wear, basically the gowns they could wear, and uh, right. several face shields we were able to send. There were seven large boxes that we sent uh, through UPS. Uh, one whole pallet, you could say, that went and, and arrived there about a week later. Mm -hmm. um, he told me, Brandon told me that this would be able to help staff his nurses for the next couple of weeks. And that's with them working each and every night, seven days a week. So that's great to hear. 
Yeah, that's, that that gives you a better idea of the scope and how much was sent. Uh, yeah. Now, I probably have a pretty guy, good idea of the the answer to this question because you and I both work with Dalreda and and on their missionary supplies and and some of the humanitarian aid that we do for other countries. Uh, but just give the audience a little idea of some of the stuff that Dalreda normally does and the reason that they had some of this personal protective equipment on hand. Sure. Um, John Kalkman, he'd be the great one to talk to on your show at some point. John Kalkman helps oversee the humanitarian aid efforts for the church at Delreda. And he does such a good job. He's very involved with sending humanitarian aid to Ukraine, uh, also to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, we are loading two uh, 53 foot trailers that we will send to New Jersey that is going to have several pallets. Um, and I say several, about 35 to 40 pallets worth of mm -hmm. PPE products, um, some some hospital beds, uh, linens, and things like that that will be sent to them. And the way John I asked him the other day, I said, John, how do we get all this equipment here? He said, it's by word of mouth. Uh, yes. Some companies are about to throw things out or they don't want to use them anymore. And what's interesting about that, we have a big warehouse full of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And now we're working with FEMA on this order to New Jersey that we're about to ship on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And we're able to send things, supplies over to Ukraine, Tanzania, to villages and communities that are really in need. Well, you know, I, I think that a lot of churches, and, and one of the reasons I'm so proud to be a member of Dalreda and, and be a part of that family, is I think a lot of churches, they they make the mistake of leaning too much into one or the other. And what I mean by that is, they make the mistake of only being concerned about places that are way far off, and then some will make the mistake of only doing sort of humanitarian aid and benevolence here stateside or around their area. And, I mean, the, the call in the gospel is both. You need both. You take care of people that are far off, and, and you do humanitarian aid there, but you also make sure you're taking care of the people, you know, just a few states over or even in your own hometown. And so I'm really, really encouraged spiritually to, to be able to see this and, and to see that the congregation has been able to help with that and that you've been a part of it. So we, we certainly appreciate the work that you've been doing with that congregation there. Yeah, it's 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 a joy. I, I really enjoy it. As you and I both have seen, when we went to Ukraine, the benevolent aid that had arrived there, that we were a part of loading the trucks. We got to see it being distributed. It, it's just right. a joy to see and to help people. I, I will really say it's a little bit surreal to be loading pallets onto a truck in America. And then you <laughs> get to Ukraine and you see that same equipment. You're like, Hey, I loaded that. Yeah. It's a really yeah, weird I've, feeling. But... I've seen those 100 so buckets I loaded on a trailer. <laughs> yeah. I never actually did the buckets. I was always there when we were doing, you know, different pallets and uh, hospital beds, I think was the one yep. that I helped with. But anyway, yeah, well, uh, Will, is there anything else that I might not have thought of that you need to let the audience know about this? Any any other details that we might have missed? Uh, as far as I know, I think we just about cover it. The, the big thing is, is okay. So, to oh, sorry, pray go for ahead. our health workers, continue to pray for those and those essential workers, janitors, health workers, truck drivers, people like that. They right. they're putting their life at risk, and they it seems like many are happy to do it and joyful to serve one another. Well, I think that's part of the call in the scripture is that uh, we take joy in, in helping one another. But one last thing that I would want to ask is if there is somebody out there watching this program that has maybe either some access to this information or sorry, has access to this equipment or has information on somebody that might and, and might want to donate it and make sure it gets to somewhere where it can do some good. Uh, would they be able to contact Delray to do that? And if so, how would they do do that? Yeah, th yes, most definitely. Um, you can actually contact me. My email address is will at delreda.org. Any benevolent aid you'd like to help send, especially any PPE equipment they are still would love to have. Um, you can call the church office at the Delreda Church of Christ here in Montgomery. Uh, and you can also, um, you could send it to our address, 3740 Atlanta Highway, Montgomery, Alabama, 36109. And uh, John Kackelman is also a great, great person to contact who is, in uh, in charge of our benevolent aid that takes place at Delreda that we send out. All right, well, well, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate what you're doing and, and what the Delreda Church of Christ is doing, and I'm sure that there's other congregations in the River Region that are doing the same thing, but 
uh, just if if you do have information on that, be sure to get in touch with them. And most importantly, Will already touched on it. I'm just going to reiterate what he said. The most important thing that we can do is is all come together and, and pray about this and do the best that we can. Because, of course, we, we do the practical things like we're talking about here where we're shipping personal protective equipment. But the most important thing is to remember to keep all of those that are especially in hot zones like New York or people that are at, at risk of this and putting their lives on the line to help others in this time. We need to keep those in our prayers and lift them up to our Father as well. Well, thanks for having me on, Caleb. I really enjoyed it. All right. I appreciate it, Will. You have a good one, brother. You too. Thank you. Bye. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman. So now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.